all yeah. about this. So uh, I could also have called it um, how to make impact, which is the current buzzword in British academia. And uh, Luther certainly was somebody who knew how to make an impact. The traditional view is that he made it 500 years ago by taking a hammer and nailing his 95 thesis on the church door. That's a myth. Um, a, uh, he couldn't, um, he, he was as practical as my predecessor, um, oh. meaning, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, some of you know uh, Nigel Palmer. Um, so all the practical things in his household had to be done by, uh, later by his wife, Kate, who did the beer brewing and so on. So he couldn't have, have used a hammer. Uh, B, um, you wouldn't hammer anything to a church door. Um, you would publish uh, things, uh, academic theses, by gluing them uh, sometimes or using seal wax. And um, that's what has, was suggested after his death by several of his fellows that he had actually um, distributed his theses by publishing them in uh, this way on the church door. But that's probably uh, a legend arising out of um, the need to have a symbolic date to pin the, oh yeah, literally pin down um, uh, the Reformation. Luther was much um, craftier in making impact. He used the newest technology, and that's how you make a real impact, by using types. Um, the, so by that point in 1517, it was already um, well over half a century old and as a technique um, ready to go um, viral, as it were. So for the first 50 years, there was experimentation with Gutenberg's invention of having movable types, which you could, could reconfigure into new um, texts um, at the spur of a moment. Uh, and Luther was just of that generation uh, that was kind of print savvy and knew how to make the best use of this new medium. Um, it took us, uh, or my History of the Book students, half a year to get as far um, as that in retype setting uh, the 95 Thesis. You can see a copy of it. Uh, it was too cumbersome to get it out of its frame on the second floor. Um, we learned a lot in uh, retype setting it. But a skilled printer would have needed for a 95 Thesis a couple of hours. And then it could be reassembled the next day and turned into the next argument. Um, so what did he publish? Um, he published uh, in 1517 first in the form of an academic challenge. Disputatio Doctoris Martini Lutheri Theologi Pro Declaratione Virtutis Indulgentiarum. So it's um, a discussion, an academic discussion calling for uh, looking at indulgences. I've typeset on the, with my students on the right hand side the English because even the master students in Oxford aren't uh, that good in Latin and longer. Um, and um, he starts it very softly Amore et studio. Um, elucidandi veritatis hec subscripta disputa buntur Wittenberge. So he wants out of love to discuss that. And his first thesis starts um, prominently with Christ as uh, number one. Dominus et magister noster Jesus Christus, dicendo penitentiam agite, etc. Omnem vitam fidelium penitentiam esse voluit. So he claims um, all of the life of uh, the believer should be a penance and you shouldn't buy it. Uh, which is something coming out of his monastic training, his engagement um, with the Bible. This isn't what really uh, would have 
been sufficient in spurring a heated debate. What comes in is then the next movement, and that's translating. So um, he translates his 95 theses into German, but just not word for word, but adapting and adjusting it to the situation of a wider public. And that then um, really caught on. Of um, the Latin thesis, we just have um, four or five editions, of this sermon, which was just a, um, an A3, more or less, sheet of paper, which could be, um, it's kind of um, this size, um, folded once, folded twice, sold for um, not quite a penny, but a pound um, on the market place, and summarizing in um, German the main points and adding an important element into it. So, ein Sermon von dem Ablass, Ablass is um, letting off of, uh, so indulgence, und Gnade. Um, here enters the key word which then captures the imagination in German, Grace, durch den würdigen Doktoren Martinum Luther Augustina zu Wittenberg gemacht. And um, he, uh, the register completely changes. So I'll just read you for the fun of it uh, the 20th and last uh, bullet point. Um, zum 20. Ob ätzlich mich nun wohl ein Ketzer schelten, dem solch Wahrheit sehr schädlich ist im Kasten, so that's the box where you would gather the indulgences, uh, money, so achte ich doch solch Geplärre nicht groß. Sinte mal, das nicht tut dann ätzlich finster Gehirne, die die Biblien nie gerochen, die christliche Lehrer nie gelesen, ihr Eigenlehrer nie verstanden, sondern in ihren löchrigen und zerrissenen Opinien viel nach verwesen. Dann hätten sie die verstanden, so wüssten sie, dass sie niemand sollten lästern, unverhört und unüberwunden. Doch Gott geht ihnen und uns rechten Sinn. Amen. Um, so that's uh, quite a different register from uh, the Latin disputation. And this form of turning in print um, the academic disputation into something that captures the imagination is a key. And then the third key, and the one I'm going to concentrate on today, is um, releasing uh, it into the oral uh, circulation by turning it into a song. And um, we have the first uh, printed evidence of it in 1524, but uh, the title page already refers to that it has been um, zum Teil bereit zu Wittenberg in Übung. So it has been a practice in Wittenberg for several years of singing um, doctrine, so singing uh, theology. And um, Luther uses for that popular forms of um, song. So this one is taken from a dance tune um, and it um, tries to, uh, and he, it's unashamedly popular. It takes up this dancing rhythm. Mit Lust und Liebe singen, was Gott an uns gewendet hat und seine Füße wundert tat, gar teuer hat er es erworben. So instead of uh, concentrating on the penance, um, and, uh, so it says, you don't need the indulgences, you just, um, God has done everything, you just rejoice and sing uh, uh, lustily um, uh, along. So, um, and then he um, uh, gives a kind of brief account of redemption history in this uh, song. So, um, 
to, to give you a, a timeline how these three movements of printing, translating and singing are interlinking and um, getting into a kind of virtuous circle of uh, spreading the word. Um, brief timeline. So, uh, in 1517, the 95 Thesis Latin, um, and then the key document of translation, which of course is not just, just the translation of the 95 Thesis, but it's uh, the New Testament in German, the, um, which uh, Luther produced uh, while he was um, sitting on the Waldburg um, and waiting uh, to get out again, um, uh, um, copped up just with Erasmus' new uh, Greek uh, New Testament and Erasmus' new Latin translation, which allowed him then in turn uh, to do a German translation. And um, it's really bringing together the theology of the thesis and the biblical basis of the German New Testament that uh, then the first hymn books come out in 1524. And um, these proved so popular um, that uh, within 1524 we know of 10 um, hymn book editions and that's only the tip of the iceberg because um, this enchiridion, um, enchiridion means in a hand, so yeah, uh, something you could carry in your pocket, um, is the only surviving um, copy just because it was bound within a chained book in a, a folio book which made it permeable. Otherwise, um, most of the books and book or rather booklets were what would, in German you would call Zellsungen. They were sunk to pieces, they were passed on. And um, I've had this, um, I, I did that as a um, test piece um, two months ago and carried it with me in, and it, it's already pretty uh, um, broken. So it's uh, not astonishing. I'll just uh, hand it round so that you can um, have a look. So, um, and if you look at the title page of it, you can see that it was done in incredible haste. Uh, printers were trying to um, overtake each other. And, uh, so you have uh, four major typos just on the title page, um, which I won't uh, go into. Um, just uh, the programmatic um, uh, claim on the title. Ein Handbüchlein, ein jeglichen Christen fast nützlich. Fast means very useful bei sich zu haben, zur steter Übung und Betrachtung geistlicher Gesänge und Psalmen, rechtschaffen und künstlich verdeutscht. Verdeutscht turned into German and that's, um, that's really bringing together in this one object these three key movements, uh, trans uh, turning it into idiomatic German, um, printing it and making it then singable. Um, the printer in Erfurt who did this uh, very first um, printed hymn book um, put in a programmatic preface where he said until now people um, have been standing in the churches and with undeutlichem Geschrei gebrüllet haben uh, wie die Waldesel zu einem tauben Gott. Until now uh, they have been uh, just uh, uh, shouting in churches like the donkeys to waken up uh, a deaf god. Um, uh, and he then likes them to the Baal's priest to think God is asleep and you can wake him up only by uh, shouting. And then contrast is uh, with a, a necessity to be understandable in what you sing and educational. Uh, so this um, little hymn book is the first that puts together a program of Protestant education, as it were. Um, and it starts uh, with a the law, then to contrast it with faith. So, uh, Folge zum ersten die zehn Gebot Gottes 
auf den Ton in Gottes Namen fahren wir. So the first hymn is um, die zehn Gebote oder ten commandments of God. Um, auf den Ton, meaning to the tune. Um, in Gottes Namen fahren wir. And that's a medieval uh, leise, which for example uh, Tristan and Isolde sing um, in Gottfried von Straßburg's uh, Tristan when they set out from Ireland to go over uh, to, to Britain. So that's again using tunes everybody would be familiar with and um, uh, linking them to um, Catechism. Then comes uh, this, uh, the song we've been looking at, Nun freut euch liebe Christen mein, as uh, the faith. And then, um, uh, other than the preface claims to says it's all new what we are bringing, in fact it's using a lot of medieval material. So, This one is der Lobsang, mitten wir im Leben sind. And I don't know, um, do you know where the next instance of this can be found? Next door. Next door, exactly. Um, so a, a medieval uh, proverb, if you go to the anatomical theater, you see um, uh, media morte in vita sumus. Um, there it's turned around. Uh, in the middle of death, we are in life to comment on the um, anatomical uh, uh, exhibitions done there. So uh, this is a song everybody again would uh, know from the um, from processions and and so on. So it, it's building on the medieval heritage. Um, but then expanding to it. Um, the same, um, you see here, ein Deutsch Hymnus oder Lobgesang. So it's a German hymns um, by being based on Latin. And um, Luther is very, um, a virtuoso in, in doing this. So he takes a popular a medieval uh, vernacular hymn, Christ is erstanden, Christ is erstanden, and turns it into a, a longer dogmatic song, um, which he calls Christ is erstanden, gebessert. So, um, a bettered, extended version of that. Christ lag in Todesbehandeln. Um, so he starts the tune on, um, like the medieval one, but then um, expands it to also to fill, fulfill the more modern criteria in um, good church music, which had been um, upgraded, as it were, by the Meistersinger, uh, who insisted on a, a clear cut structure for a proper hymn, has the AAB structure. So you have a Uh, first part, which is repeated, and then you have an Abgesang, uh, a final part uh, that, like if you know uh, how a um, sonnet works, uh, that has the turning round point between the quartets and the um, uh, tertets, and then it ends in a punchline, like a limerick. So um, he, he brings up to scratch the medieval uh, tunes as well as the medieval texts. And I'm uh, now looking at the in the remaining time at two specific uh, hymns from the, um, uh, which Luther both bases on the other important medieval element of soundscape, namely the Psalms. So he came out of um, the monastic setting where he would daily sing Uh, the Psalms in, in the hours, and they are for him the reservoir of theology uh, he constantly refreshes and links up with his um, uh, doctrine. This is um, the first uh, printed text that we have of Luther, 
uh, before the uh, 95 Thesis, in 1513, his first uh, lecture series, which was on the Psalms as a um, young uh, lecturer at Wittenberg. And um, he had it printed at the um, university printers, uh, double spaced, so uh, that he could uh, put his lecture notes in and also all of the students had to buy um, this as a textbook copy uh, to, to take notes. Um, and you can really uh, follow the development of his theological thinking by looking through the notes as uh, they come doing lecturing. I, I find it quite a good method of uh, developing your thoughts while um, uh, lecturing. You also see in um, the titles he uh, adds, which is a medieval tradition to have captions above the Psalms, which uh, there he puts up exhortatio Christi ad suos. So he reads the Psalms through a Christological um, lens. Um, and that is very much how he then writes his German psalm hymns. Mm. So probably the very first hymn he ever wrote, perhaps as early as this uh, psalm lecture of 1513, although we only have these later copies, is a German version of the psalm De Profundis, out of the depths which was one of the penitential psalms um, which would be sung in the monastic um, setting as an act of um, penitence and um, confession of sins. And in a way, it's his answer to the indulgences before uh, the 95 Thesis in writing out um, and updating these, um, uh, this psalm. Um, I've um, given you that um, on the handout as well, and he writes a tune for it, which closely mirrors the theology. Um, I've, in, in purple, you have um, the... English translation of uh, the Psalms, of the, um, the Coverdale translation, which is interesting because Miles Coverdale um, didn't know Hebrew when he translated it, so he translated from the Vulgate but consulting Luther. Um, he, he knew he had studied with Luther, so he, um, it's um, and it's the Psalm version which most. Um, Anglicans will be most familiar with because it um, entered the Book of Common Prayers and so it's still sung at, at Evensong in, in the colleges or uh, in the cathedrals. Um, I've put in bold what he adds. So um, it starts out of the deep I've called unto thee and uh, with Luther it becomes aus tiefer Not. So he adds not crisis emergency, uh, not Ausgang as an emergency exit. Um, it, it's a, a personal crisis he is describing. It's not a physical uh, low point. And the calling becomes a schreien, um, a cry of anguish, uh, a shout. And um, he mirrors that uh, the tune is set in Frugian uh, church mode, which is one step darker than uh, minor. So if you have you have a uh, major um, as for happy things, minor for uh, sad things, and Frugian is um, still one um, uh, lower, as it were. And he started uh, with a drop by a fifth to mirror the deep, the tiefer. Aus tiefer Not schrei ich zu dir, Herr Gott, hör, hör mein Rufen. So the Ruhufen is uh, reflected by the uh, Melisma. Uh, and then um, the repetition, as I said, uh, that's the structure that had been um, made the norm by the Meistersinger to have a repetition of the first part. 
dein gnädig Ohren kehr zu mir. So gnädig is uh, merciful is at the point where the deep had been in the first instance. So the pr profoundness of grace is as deep as the, uh, the anguish or the um, crisis. Und meine Bitte So uh, the openness of God again um, mirrors the rufen um, of, of uh, mankind. And it's quite astonishing that how he manages to uh, stay fairly close to the psalm. You could just call it a, a paraphrase um, if you don't want to, to call it a literal translation and still um, uh, put in these um, theological markers. Denn so du willst das Sehen an, wie manche Sünd ich abgetan. Und Sünd, uh, Sin is the highest point of the whole tune. Er kann er vor dir bleiben. Um, and uh, so what he puts in, um, Sünd is there implicitly in um, what is done amiss, so what has gone wrong, but to label it explicitly as this theological concept of sin is Luther's um, addition, and also um, it's uh, the thought of um, having a gracious God, so for dear blind, it's not just um, I, I want um, to have a good life, but I want to have a good life in your eyes and uh, for your um, so and I, I thought, uh, since it's um, important really to understand it, we'll all uh, sing it uh, together. I'll, we'll do it um, like uh, Luther would have uh, done with the congregation by first practicing line by line and then singing it well. So I'll, I'll sing one line and then we all uh, um, repeat the line. You have, if you um, are better in reading from the uh, modern notation, you have it also there on um, uh, the handheld. Aus tiefer Not schrei ich zu dir. Aus, come on. <laughs> Aus tiefer Not schrei ich zu dir. Very good. Herr Gott, Herr, Herr, mein Rufen. One go so far. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Aus tiefer Not schrei ich zu dir, Herr Gott, hör mein Rufen, dein gnädig Ohren kehr zu mir und mein Abbitt sie öffnen. Denn so du willst das sehen an, was wie manche sind ich abgetan, der kann her vor dir bleiben. All that. Denn so, denn, 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 Oh, yeah, den so du willst das sehen an, wie manche sind dich abgetan, wer kann her vor dir bleiben? Very good. Uh, um, so, um, he continues going through the psalm, um, sharpening up the theological concepts. Um, so uh, the psalm speaks about 
there, uh, there is mercy with thee, therefore shalt thou be feared. Um, and uh, Luther turns that into four lines um, where he says, Gnad und Gunst, bei dir gilt nichts denn Gnad und Gunst, die Sünde zu vergeben. Es ist doch unser Tun umsonst, auch in dem besten Leben. Vor dir niemand sich rühmen kann, des muss dich fürchten, jedermann. So that he comes back into the psalm, therefore everybody must fear you. Um, und deiner Gnade leben. And there again, the psalm speaks about trust and he puts in the uh, Gnade twice framing these uh, lines. I found it quite interesting. Um, if you look at a 19th century Methodist translation of uh, this, this is a kind of überluther, uh, which adds in even more of uh, the grace and puts in several of his later theological concepts um, and then links it with a, um, with a much more sweet tune because let's turn from Frugian into um, uh, my, just minor key. To the scarlet stain, grace, grace, alone, is so then the uh, Methodist and then all works. Um, Alas, are all in vain, which is uh, the um, that works aren't working is something that is, is really coming later with Luther, not at that point when he was writing out of the depths. So um, in the 19th century, it, it all comes packaged together. Um, and um, so the la uh, jumping uh, across two verses, just to look at the last verse, uh, where he again ups uh, the theological impact of it. Um, uh, the psalm speaks, uh, Israel, trust in the Lord. Um, he shall redeem Israel from all his sin. So, and he shall redeem Israel from all his sins is literally translated, der Israel erlösen wird aus seinen Sünden allen. But um, Luther doubles this up and in the, has, speaks in the first two lines, ob bei uns ist der Sünden viel. Even if there is a lot of sin with us. So he turns it, um, there is no uh, collective first person in the psalm. He turns it into a communal um, confession of uh, faith, um, which uh, brings together uh, the historic Israel and Pauline theology um, and he, he called it a, a Pauline psalm, so something that had been infused in his view uh, by the theology of the epistles of, of the Apostle Paul. Um, the other uh, case I'm going to look briefly at um, comes at a much later point in the Reformation. So it's not included in this first Enchiridion. It's written as a response to the heating up of the controversy of the Reformation. And he's much, uh, he still bases his theology on the Psalms, but operates much more uh, freely to turn it into polemics. Um, so it's still called um, Der 46. Psalm, Der Os Nostra Refugium et Virtus. So it um, points to uh, the uh, uh, biblical foundation. But uh, if you look in modern hymn books, while Aus Tiefer Not is under the rubric Psalms, this is under the rubric um, von der Rechtfertigung, about justification and, and faith. Um, so he just starts um, with Ein uh, feste Burg ist unser Gott and um, this is um, a battle song, as it were, um, and uh, the tune is not in Frisian but in Doric mode. And it's much closer to, uh, it's a newly written 
tune for this psalm, but it's uh, much closer to the early dance rhythms he used. So, ein fester Burg ist vor unser Gott, ein Gute wie und Waffen, der all böse Feind, and so on. Um, again, turned into this Meistersinger structure of AA. Uh, B. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm looking, at, uh, it's uh, the, the hymn that has the most checkered uh, reception history of all the Reformation uh, tunes. Um, so here, um, he just takes the basic idea of God uh, guarding the faithful as a um, like a um, fortress, um, but um, then much more openly puts in the ideas from the New Testament. So he identifies uh, Lord Zebaoth with Jesus Christ. Fragst du, wer der ist? Er heißt Jesus Christ und ist kein anderer Gott. Das Feld muss er ähm, behalten. Uh, and um, then um, instead of the image in the psalm of um, uh, the happy city of uh, God, he just takes up the raging of the heathens and identifies it with his um, contemporary um, uh, 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 opponents and um, enemies. Um, I, 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 found, I, I took for this uh, as English translation a new translation of the 20th century which was commissioned for the newest hymn book of the United Reformed Church in, in Britain and which took in some of the reception uh, history of it. So, um, uh, that uh, puts um, this in. The tyrants of this age strut briefly on the stage. Their sentence has been passed. We stand unharmed at last. A word from God destroys them. And that's a, a clear reference also to um, the use of um, the hymn um, during times of conflict uh, throughout history. So under, when under Maria Theresia, uh, the Protestants had to leave Austria. Uh, so they had the alternative, if you can call it an alternative, either converting or um, leaving, but leaving um, without um, their goods um, and without their children. Uh, so um, they uh, went off on, on ships singing um, Nehmen Sie den Leib, gut ihr Kind und Weib, lass fahren dahin. Um, Sie haben es kein Gewinn. So um, uh, this uh, history of conflict and even more the history of conflict of the 20th century because Ein Festeburg um, became the battle cry um, on both sides of the Kirchenkampf in the 1930s. So uh, the um, uh, controversy between the so-called Deutsche Christen, the uh, German Christians, meaning those uh, ready to um, be organized within a national socialist uh, state, having the bishops approved by Hitler um, and uh, making it an Aryan church. So they would start um, their assemblies normally by singing the first verse, Ein feste Burg ist unser Gott, as a kind of militaristic statement. But on the other side, um, the Bekende Kirche, the church confessant uh, with um, people like Karl Barth, um, who wrote for them the main confession uh, the Bauma Erklärung, uh, t picking up the 95 Theses of um, Luther in, in this formulation, or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, they would also um, 
use this hymn in every assembly, they would normally close their uh, meetings, not with the first verse, but with this last verse. Das Wort sie sollen lassen stand und kein Dank dazu haben. So the word is what will uh, remain and um, can't be uh, taken uh, away. So it, um, everybody picked up from um, this combined uh, history um, of uh, the hymns, whatever uh, fitted their own impact agenda, as it uh, were. And these uh, printed, translated, and sung theology also then make it across borders. So um, Luther, in a way, is most present in the anglo uh, phone world or in, in England through the um, him uh, at that point of through the hymn translations of Miles Coverdale, um, which he did already in um, the 19, uh, 1530s. They only survive in one copy again um, because they also were zersungen. Uh, the one copy is um, in Queen's College in, in Oxford, so uh, quite nice for me to have it next door, um, as it were. And, um, he immediately recognized that this uh, trias of translating, singing, and printing was the way forward uh, to um, having an impact. So, um, to come uh, to conclusion, um, I, I think uh, um, really, this the, the combination that uh, Luther uh, played worked much better than taking a hammer and a nail for a sheet of paper. Uh, rather, making sure um, the different modes of circulation of the 16th century were used uh, to full effect. And um, I'm trying to. Um, pick up on that um, with my students. Uh, I teach uh, history of the book and um, paleography in Oxford. So we have been starting to put up a digital library of uh, key texts, translating them um, into English, making them um, Creative Commons license uh, to download, and also um, putting up uh, singing events around um, Oxford. Right, that's it. Thanks a lot. This really sort of brought the beginnings of Reformation to life. <laughs> <laughs>